And then Bloopy's Buddies. I mean, that's pretty cool. How did that all come about for you? I, I didn't create the show. Uh, I was on the show. It came about as many things in my life uh, because of my gymnastics background. And the reason was when I moved to New York, uh, most people get support jobs as, as, as waiters or whatever. And I, because I had a, a skill that paid you know, a lot more, uh, and that is coaching gymnastics, I did. So I went to some of the private clubs and you know, I had all the credentials to get hired. So that was easy. And I got hired and I was working with, uh, you, know, you have your, the kids you work with every day. And one of them, uh, um, Michelle was her name, Michelle Ginsburg, uh, got a, I wonder how old she is today, but her father came up to me and he said, um, and I get along well with kids. I like kids. So um, he said, uh, I'm producing the show on PBS called Bloopies Buddies, and I would like you to be involved in it as this or that or the other. He wasn't completely sure, but I went, uh, okay, yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that was real easy. And it evolved to me being in several segments of it. The biggest one, I was jumping Jack. I was, I, oh my God, that's her actually. That's his daughter, Michelle. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Uh, well, whatever period those computers were in was the period we started. Um, that's Blue. And that was on PBS. That was part of PBS Kids. I mean, and that, you know, well, is landmark in the 1990s. Oh Kids, my I'm sure, remember this. Wow. I'm getting, I'm having a flashback here. Yeah. Well, this, huh? It was a health, safety, fitness, nutrition show for kids between three and seven. And all the characters, uh, like uh, that was Sergeant Lookout, was his name, were all uh, Jonathan Winters. Jonathan was Winters. Yeah. Um, the, uh, this is Maestro Johan Batan. And that was Bloopy in the background. This is my one of my segments. In the, I live in the gym shoe. Uh, so you're Bloopy. in the gym shoe. And um, you'll, I don't know how far this goes, but Jumpin' Jack was live on there and we did uh, live, so to speak. It, it was actually ahead of its time because it was the fitness, I was all the fitness parts of it. And we would do interactive exercise with the kids. And we had yeah. kids in the studio, of course, but I'm talking to the camera, to the kids at home and today, and we always had a theme and th this theme might be rhythm there. I recognize the kids. Um, today may be rhythm and so we have different things and i had there it was just a fun show now on, on these segments this was the bloopy size segment um i'm actually off camera doing this so the kids can watch because it's hard to just stare at bloopy so they're actually seeing you doing these moves and that's how they're able to follow what's happening yes wow for, for this segment yeah so, for That's the good. segments where we're teaching, no, I'm on camera. Yeah. With like four kids right there. It wouldn't be quite as many. And then they are watching me. We're, we're positioned in a different way. This is more, this is the bloopy shuffle, which was the trademark dance yeah. of, of the show. And, uh, and the guy that was inside of bloopy was just, he was great. Really, really a great dancer. And he really brought Bo bloopy to life. And my understanding is it was very difficult because that costume was evidently very uncomfortable. I was never in it, but, uh, but it was fun. And uh, they did a great job. I felt like I thought it was ahead of its time. It was much more low tech, as you can see, uh, but it was ahead of its time. It really started an exercise trend, I believe, for kids TV. Yes. And people jumped on it uh, for years. And every so often I hear someone say something about it. So I think it still uh, airs in some worlds, but you know, everything is much more high tech now. And, and that's, that's great. But I, I, I liked that we, I felt like we were on the ground floor of the, they didn't know it at the time. It's looking yeah. back. Like, Whoa. Yes. Kind of started something. It really, yeah. It was right around the same time period as uh a, a long time public television colleague of mine. He's since retired, but um, uh, Larry Rifkin, who uh, really brought Barney to bear on PBS. And uh, I think it was something like his daughter, they were at a video game. They were at a store, you know, video game store. And his daughter wanted to watch some video and she was mesmerized by this video of Barney. 
uh, just a regular video that she got off the shelf and she just wore that tape out, mm -hmm. that VHS tape out. And he was intrigued by that. And uh, he was doing national programming for the uh, affiliate in Hartford. And he approached them, the uh, producers, uh, the creators of Barney, and then brought it to PBS. And because his daughter loved it and wore that tape out, it became this long running, you know, series, Barney, oh, yeah, on Barney. public public television. A lot of these types of things were really big at that point. Uh, well, public television, I mean, you know, I've been affiliated with it for a long time. It's the kids shows, the children's programs, you know, even if uh, some of the early ones weren't, you know, the most high tech, but still, when you look at like Sesame Street and Zoom and Mr. Rogers Neighborhood and Arthur and, and all of them, uh, reading Rainbow, uh, Where in the World mm. is Carmen San Diego, Loopy's <laughs> Buddies, all of them. There's a there's an innocence to them, but there's a warmth and a welcoming uh, nature to them, a non-threatening feel to them, which isn't always what you see on television. And not only is it helping kids learn, but it also makes them feel safe and accepted and comfortable and uh, teamwork. This one, I think they titled this one, You Are Special. I mean, that's the, that's a great message uh, that kids need to hear, right? Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, we saw it, the fun part about that's oh, one of the segments. Uh, the fun part was seeing the kids interact with Bloopy, with me. Uh, and feel comfortable and it yes. and all that yes and uh that this was one this was one of my segments that's uh, you there in the middle <laughs> believe that, it or not. there he is there's jack hyman right that's, there that's still not the teaching segment the teaching this is again another bloopy size segments segment uh bloopy uh di didn't bloopy talked but could not be spontaneous so because it, it was all pre-recorded uh, so just in that time. So uh, hence Jumpin' Jack, which was my character, came to be because when we do show, we did Westbury. We did a lot of sh live shows. Yes. It needed a, uh, a, a semi-real human. So they asked me uh, so uh, to to be the, to, to be a spokesperson for it because unless it was recorded, Bloopy could only just nod or say, you know, yes or no, or move or get excited. <laughs> There you are. Wonderful. So happy you came. That's cool. That's <laughs> and then they go to all the different segments. And... Yes, each one has a bloopy character: the doctor, the uh, police officer, uh, the chef, uh, the gym shoe guy. Uh, and when they go into each of those uh, segments, obviously the base costume, but uh, they had their own accents, they had their own voices, they had their own script. Uh, of the things they did I wrote the uh, the exercise segments were mine so I was in charge of writing all of those uh, which was great fun uh, but that you know that I got it because I was teaching her daughter his daughter see uh, that's and, uh, where the gymnastics uh, you know the athletic prowess along with being an actor and having the understanding of performance and in this yeah. case working with kids really uh, all came together in this perfect vehicle for you. I completely, it, it really was a, a perfect storm of everything. And I knew when I, uh, when, he, when he asked me basically to start just on a low keyed way, but they were looking for a bigger role on it. And I went, no, 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 I, this is mine. You know? So uh, we said, well, we'll do it on a trial basis. And then I ended up you know, doing the, the gym shoe thing, the segments, but it was it was a wonderful yes all of what you just said is true it all came together and it it was a lot of fun and they worked hard the producers they had a lot of good uh, writers was it shot in New York it was the first one or two seasons were shot actually uh, at KPBS in San oh, Diego KPBS San Diego sure great station ask me how much I loved San Diego. Anyway, oh, San Diego is nice. Yes. <laughs> just to go there. And I actually was hoping that they would keep it out there. Then it moved back to the East Coast to NJN in, New in Trenton, I believe. Yes. New Jersey Network. Sure. Right. right. So that's where it changed uh, and then stayed there. Uh, there I think we used, uh, actually, I think we used, uh, not ESPN, but we used uh, one of the uh, studios of one of the networks 
Yeah. And, um, it, it's, but it stayed. Then it stayed in Trenton for the rest of the time. We never went back. I don't know the backstory. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but it was just as much fun, just different. And Jonathan Winters was a hoot. So, uh, oh, yes, absolutely. To have him as a part of that, yeah, yeah really, he told, really. He told children's stories in a lot of his characters that you know we all uh have grown to love, over yeah, years, and uh, it was just fun to, to have him around. So, when while you were working on Bloopy's Buddies for PBS Kids, um, were you also working on other things simultaneously, or did this really consume a good deal of your time, Jack? Uh, no, I could work well, I didn't work on other things during the weeks we're taping, that was very specific, so that was a, a big commitment. But it was just a few weeks, I, I don't know, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, but uh, when we so it did not take a lot of my year. Uh, because you tape all the episodes over a period of days or weeks, and then that's it. And it's you know, called stripping, I believe, where they just keep yes. showing it. So, uh, so no, it was a segment of time each year or twice a year uh, to tape. And then I, you know, I got the, in advance. Uh, they gave me a lot of leeway to create uh, the exercises. And there were some parameters, you know, they had to be this and had to be that, all which were good. And then I worked with uh, um, uh, an exercise, a fitness guru, a woman named Linda Carson, actually. I can't believe mm. I'm still remembering it. Remember that, yeah. And, uh, we ran everything I would do. I'd run it by her so she could be the expert to say, yes, this, this is good to work with the kids. And then she had ideas, too. And then I would take them and write the scripts and then perform them and then do it with the kids. And, uh, and there's you know, a lot of ad libbing too, because kids, yes. are, I mean, that was the fun of kids. That was one of my favorite parts. Cause you know, you have a kid who's jumping up and down, but starting to go off camera Yes, and, and you know, you're taping uh, <laughs> and you don't want to stop. Not that you can't, but so right. you, you come up with lots of creative ways to, to say, okay, bring that bunny rabbit back this way. You know? <laughs> like this. He's but, still on the cameras are still rolling. We're still yeah. on. <laughs> oh, yeah. There are very few times, I don't know that there were many at all, that it had to stop for that reason. Yeah. Uh, so because that's part of it, being able to see the kids, it being kids, you know, even with the, the crazy things that they might come up with that are different and unexpected, that became a little bit uh, of a part of the show. Well, and okay. all that you're doing. A couple of things. Uh, Matthew's watching. Uh, Matthew, welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. He says uh, they should make a new Bloopies Buddies show and turn it into a new cartoon. I couldn't agree more. Let's do it. Yes. Matthew, Matthew if you can produce it, I'm. if you need my help, I'm there. Yes. In any way, any capacity. That's it. That's 